G'day golfers, Glenn Haynes at Aussie Golf Pros. Well, recently there have been some videos posted on the differences between the driver swing and the iron swing. And we thought we'd go over those differences and discuss the merits of each one. And towards the end of the video, I'd like to introduce you to a couple of key aspects that everyone seems to have forgotten. But before getting stuck right in, if you're new to this channel, then please click that subscribe button, hit the little bell in the corner for your notifications. We send out a new video every week. But above all, post your comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the differences between your irons and your driver, and whether you agree with us. Let's hop to it. Driver swing versus iron swing. Well, let's talk about what is different. Let's start with the setup. Set up with an iron, stance about shoulder width apart, ball position slightly forward. That might vary a little bit from player to player, but most elite players are going to be about there. And then as we get into the driver, we'll obviously be further away from the golf ball, longer club. Ball position will be further forward, we're up on a tee, and the stance will definitely be wider. And all of that setup does is, is it positions us behind the ball more, there might be some more shoulder tilt because the ball is more forward. And some players prefer a little bit more weight on the trail leg, personal preference. And a lot of players just keep with 50-50. But the whole idea that we're going to actually swing differently, well, I have a real issue with that because all we really want to do here is change the angle of approach. With the iron, we want to hit down on the ball. Tour average for hitting down on the seven iron is only about four degrees, so it's not a lot. And with the driver, a lot of players want to hit up on the ball. Tour average is actually about level. Some players hit up on it, some players hit, still hit down slightly. But by doing those differences in the setup that we just talked about, we're achieving that. The bottom of the swing arc is changing in relation to the golf ball. And we're gonna have a different angle of approach because of the ball position. And also because it's up on a tee with the driver. But why do we need to have two different swings for the irons and the drivers? It makes no sense to me. Granted, there might be the odd player out there on tour that does have a, a slightly different technique for driver to iron, but I'm talking about advice for club golfers who don't get to practice a great deal. Are you really suggesting that we should have a completely different movement pattern through the driver that we do with the iron? Here are the examples that have been talked about. So with the driver, the left shoulder for a right-hander I think the example used was Rory McIlroy. He gets his left shoulder behind the golf ball. This image from Golfer. But if we have a look at this image on the Golf Channel, here of Rory at the top of his golf swing with an iron, we can see that his left shoulder is, surprise, surprise, behind the golf ball. Granted, the swing might be a little bit shorter with the iron, but this is definitely not something that, that Rory's consciously thinking about. This is a function of, of the setup and just the intention with which how far he wants to hit the golf ball. This also from the Golf Channel. For me, I feel like uh, balance is a big key for me in, in my driving. Go ahead and, and, and talk about that. So you're talking yeah. about balance. Balance just and, and stability, you know, the whole way throughout the swing. So, I mean, I would, you know, I, I would stand maybe a little wider with my driver than obviously the, the rest of the clubs. It really feel as if I get myself into a good, you know, athletic position where I'm ready to, to hit the shot. So obviously just try and pick a target out there. You know, get your setup nice and wide. Feel, feel stable. And the next thing that's often talked about is the movement of the body through impact with the driver, the player should stay behind the ball with the, with the torso, and then with an iron, cover the ball more, get the, uh, I think it was the left shoulder over the left foot, and get the chest more on top of the ball almost like swaying ahead to, to, to make sure that we hit down on the golf ball. Well, I guarantee you, if, if, if you've got a player swaying across here like this, you're gonna hit some pretty awful shots. And if we have a look at these images of Dustin Johnson on Golf Monthly and new world number one, John Rahm from Michael John Field, we can see that both players are well behind the iron at impact. So clearly we can see that a lot of golfers are actually still behind the golf ball at impact with an iron, 
Not as much because the ball position is in a different spot. But the fact is that the elite players don't hit down on it by swaying forward and getting their chest ahead of the golf ball. Elite players hit down on the ball because they have a massive amount of lag and they're actually just brushing the turf after impact. That's the definition of hitting down on the ball, not by changing your body motion and having a different movement pattern through impact. That's crazy. There's a school of thought that with the driver, a lot of players release more actively with the hands and the club through impact to generate more speed. But actually, if we've got a different release pattern from the iron through to the driver, considering that the ball is, is slightly more forward in the stance as well, then surely that means that the club face is now closed through impact because the release is more active and we're gonna hit a lot of left shots for a right-hander. That stands to reason. And as for pointing the club at the target at the top of the follow-through, well, I guarantee you there's no good player thinking about that through the golf swing. And if we have a look at the stills of, of the great Tiger Woods and we have a look at him just after impact with the iron and with the driver, we can see that they're, they're pretty much identical. Tiger with the iron on Golf Week USA Today and with the driver on Australian Golf Digest. What we see here is a consistent release pattern right through the set. It's only gonna change if we get into those shorter shots, pitches and chip shots. So notice that these movements, they're very internal. Getting the left shoulder behind the ball, moving the chest ahead of the golf ball, or releasing the hands through impact differently. They're very internally focused, and that's gonna be detrimental to your performance. What we suggest is you keep as simple as possible. By all means, they're going to be a couple of different setup points with the driver than you would have with your irons because we wanna hit slightly up on the ball and, and the iron is on the ground. So we wanna compress it, we wanna hit down on the ball slightly. But there are two main factors here that have really been forgotten by a lot of golf coaches out there. And the two main factors are that we actually align the clubs differently with an iron than we do with the driver and our strike point is different. They're the two main factors that we should be focusing on when we're working on irons and drivers. So with an iron, we're lining up to the target with the leading edge. Check out your irons, they might even have a colored line, a white line in the bottom groove to help you with your alignment. But I see a lot of golfers use the top edge to align to the target and then get a little bit closed with the iron. Now the driver's different, the shape of it is different, and we're actually now gonna use the top edge. So for an iron, it's the leading edge, but for a driver and any wood, we're gonna use the top edge to line up square to our target. They're the really important things that set up that we wanna be focusing on, making sure that we're getting square to the target. Because I see every week players misalign because they're not looking at the correct part of the golf club to line up. Specific, specifically, that's with the iron. So setting up with an iron, making sure that we're square to the target, looking at that leading edge, and there's a close up from my point of view. And then setting up with the driver, see a ball up. And it's getting square to that same target there, looking at the top edge now, and here you can see that that's a completely different look from my point of view and it's very easy to uh, be inconsistent if you're not really aware of what part of the club that you're supposed to be lining up to the target with. And the really key aspect that's different between the driver and the iron is where on the face you're striking the ball. And that's one of the things that you should be really focusing on when you're practicing. So let's hit a, an iron and see where the strike point is. I'll just put a small mark on the golf ball here and that'll transfer onto the golf club. Right down the bottom is our strike point on the ball. And let's get some feedback on where our strike point is. Felt like it was a little bit out the heel. There we go, but you see how that mark is towards the bottom. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. The sweet spot is down the bottom of an iron but the driver is completely different. 
I've got some spray on the driver here so we get some feedback on where we're going to strike that ball with the driver. Again, looking at that top edge to line up to the target. And then we see the strike point there with the driver is a lot higher up the club face, just above centre, and that's going to give us that maximum launch and a slightly reduced spin. Strike it too low on the driver, like you did with an iron, and you're going to lose some distance. You're going to impart a lot of backspin on the ball, and it's not going to go anywhere near as far or as high. So in wrapping up, yes, there are a couple of key differences between the driver and your irons in the setup, but there should be no conscious differences through the swing. We shouldn't be focusing on what our left shoulder is doing or what our torso is doing or what our hands are doing. These are internal are going to disrupt performance. Your focus should be external. Finding the middle, finding the sweet spot with any golf club that you're hitting and trying to hit that ball as close to that target as you can. Let's keep it simple and give you the best chance of hitting your targets out in the golf course. Are you the best golfer you can be?